안녕하세요. Greetings. I'm Professor Kim Jong-un, working at the Department of Prosthodontics at Yonsei University College of Dentistry. In this session, I will explore key considerations needed when designing abutments digitally. Abutment design is crucial. It not only supports the crown but also influences the profile creation. The profile of implant superstructure is supported by this. To provide a prosthesis similar to natural teeth, the shape of the abutment can be even more significant than the crown factor. Depending on placement position, we need to understand the natural teeth contour and characteristics. In the case of anterior area, the mesiodistal width is quite significant. In the case of premolar, the buccal lingual width is quite significant. We need to understand the different characteristics of different areas. This has been mentioned before in the case of anterior area. The width is significant in the case of premolar. Buccal lingual width is wider, and uh, you can see that there is a significantly wider dimensions of for molar area. If you cannot form these profile in the abutment, no matter how you do a good job on the crown, you will not be able to get the right contour. Abutment design is very important morphologically. Let me give you an example using premolar. If you look over here, Cervical third is shown like this. The abutment does not have sufficient buccal lingual width, and that is why it looks like this. The width should be sufficient in order to imitate the natural teeth, but because such was insufficient, it resulted like this. If you look here, as for here, it has sufficient buccal lingual width, so it looks much more natural, more so than the crown. The abutment needs to have a basic shape nicely established. This is important. I'm talking in relation with the contour of tooth. It's the same for mesial distal width as well. The example is here. If you look at the green line, mesial distal width is quite tight. The crown starts from here. If you take a look, the cervical area looks quite unnatural. Zenith line seems to be okay. But up to the contact point, the profile looks quite unnatural. The width of the abutment is significant here, so it looks very natural. The abutment contour is very important, and this is emphasized over and over. This is a step before providing prosthesis. The importance of abutment shape is underscored and considerations for the crown thickness at the abutment level are fundamental. The appropriate thickness for different materials vary depending on whether it's gold, zirconia, or PFM, and how much distance you're going to have with the antagonist, things can vary. Such considerations need to be made. Second, you need to consider retention. Next, moving on, is about a taper of the abutment. If the taper is too significant, then the retention can be affected. If you reduce the taper and increase angle, you may think that retention may be improved, but it does not allow for error. With the smallest error in crown, then it will not be properly fit to the crown. Third, is the bottom part. We need to consider this. Transgingival portion needs to be considered. How the contour is formed around here is something that we need to have in mind. I want to go into each in detail. We talk about two millimeters in basic. We use a zirconia frequently when applying insurance, PFM is used. For PFM crown, if it is porcelain occlusion rather than metal occlusion, it requires about 2 millimeters. 2 millimeters of gap is made 
If you use metal or gold, then it can be shorter, but in order to prevent the crown fracture or other issues, we need to consider the prosthesis thickness, and we need to make sure that the thickness is even. On the design, these can be very important. Next, moving on to the angle, it says a 0 to 4, but 0 is not visible. It goes in straight right angle, but then, even with the smallest error, then the crown will not fit properly. Therefore, zero is impossible. In the case of abutment with a significantly low height, we can provide retention groove. The surface is sandblasted. We can sandblast it and reduce the angle so that there's a, a bit more of an angle rather than the abutment that's almost lying down. As shown here, when providing prosthesis for two or three implants, the angle is very important because the implant impression itself may have some error. When fabricating prosthesis, there can be error as well. We need to allow for a certain level of error, especially in the case of multiple cases. If the abutment has very little taper in a multiple implant case, then it can cause adaptation issues. This is something that we need to bear in mind. Moving on to angle, when we do prep, we talk about the importance of taper angle. The larger the taper, the retention decreases significantly. So we should not reduce it significantly. Certain level of angle is necessary, but if it becomes excessive, then it leads to unwanted results as well. We also need to consider function, whether it's a single case, multiple case, and distance with the antagonist. And following the right position, we need to make an appropriate order. What is important is subgingival contour. The implant seems to have been placed a slightly shallow gingival thickness uh, may have been extremely thin. The changes in abutment profile look very significant. If you do this, then it will be subject to continuous inflammation. And oral hygiene will not be easy to keep. There will be bone loss. Various uh, negative cycle will result. Uh, if the subgingival contour changes very significantly, it will lead to unfavorable results. Uh, I want to talk about considerations that we need to bear in mind upon designing. First is the contour and size of the abutment. I've talked about uh, the contour and shape from the beginning. Profile should be similar to that of natural teeth, especially in the aesthetic zones such as anterior or premolar area. We need to really pay attention to detail in profile. At times, uh, provisionals are made ahead in, for implants placed in these areas. We use uh, provisionals to do tissue molding. We adjust the gingival form. Provisionals are adjusted to form the desired gingival profile. The impression is taken and final design is done. Tissue molding in the anterior zone is very essential. In the case of a molar area, it is not as essential, but for smooth oral hygiene and for aesthetic factor, we need to find the right profile. Various shapes need to be considered. I've talked about the overall tooth shape at the very beginning. It is very important that we understand the different characteristics and shapes as well as size of different teeth. Not just a buccolingual but mesiodistal width needs to be determined correctly. We need to provide a provisional in the anterior zone to do tissue molding, and then we should move on to abutment designing process. Next, I want to talk about abutment size. In the posterior area, various uh, results can be achieved because in the posterior area, crown profile 
Some people think that it does not necessarily have to be similar to natural teeth. The people have different opinions on this. There can be different options, and here it says of A, B, C, D options. In the case of A, it is about providing the same contour anatomically, and for D, there will be no tissue displacement and there will be no major changes from healing about my size. As for this, these are options in the middle. In the case of posterior area, everyone has slightly different opinions. Depending on the situation, we need to provide contour as necessary. We adjust the gingiva when we provide an abutment, and the marginal position is very important. Whether it's subgingival, equigingival, or supragingival, we can make choices. In the case of anterior area, it's subgingival, margin. In most cases, it's going to be equigingival margin. There are areas where subgingival margin is unnecessary, just like uh, the molar region. Premolar region where aesthetics are not as important, such options can be used. At times, a supragingival margin is necessary. In case where oral hygiene is very important or where gingival condition is not as good, in order to allow for easy oral hygiene maintenance, a supragingival margin can be provided. In aesthetic zone, subgingival margin should be provided. There is a major downside to it. It's extremely difficult to remove excess cement. We need to remove cement properly in order to prevent any inflammation. In the case of ER type, if you provide subgingival margin, the cement does not come down significantly, so it's a benefit. And in most cases, it's equigingival margin is chosen. This is used for most cases. As for supragingival margin, it's not aesthetic, but as mentioned before, it has many advantages in terms of hygiene maintenance. Where this plays an important role, you need to choose supragingival margin. Another important point is subgingival margin design. To give you a correct answer, it should be concave. They should be basic, but depending on different situation, you can make different choices. Straight type is not a bad option, but the problem lies with convex option. In the case of anterior zone, when you do tissue molding on the top, it requires convex design at times. In most cases, the area here is more favorable when it's concave than convex because you can secure more biologic width and excessive pressure is not applied to gingiva except for specific marginal gingiva and position this is not the kind of design that is preferred concave design is more favorable in securing biologic width in general concave design is recommended you can secure biologic width and yes, of course, you need to pay attention to removing cement. There is a risk of residual cement being left here, so we need to be cautious of that. In most cases, in order to form a healthy gingiva around the implant, the concave design is chosen. There are no major issues with a straight design. But, in most cases, people say it is better to start off concave when starting off from the implant area. This allows for more stable maintenance of bone. In the case of convex design, as mentioned earlier, it can apply pressure to gingiva. Rather than overall concaveness around the marginal gingiva area, it can be slightly convex, but as for the rest of the area, it's better if it's concave. I have talked about thickness by different materials. In the case of gold, it is 1 to 1.5 millimeters. In the case of PFM, porcelain occlusion, it requires 2 millimeters. Zirconia, 1 to 1.5 millimeters or over. You need to be aware of the thickness of four different materials. 
as mentioned earlier, we need to look at the angle of the abutment. This is what I've mentioned earlier. The issue with the zero degree is that the crown hits the top part of the abutment, so it does not go in here. Even with the slightest error, it does not go in, so there is significant risk with zero degrees. No matter how much retention you want to achieve, zero degrees may not be a good option. I've talked about how the abutment angle itself can play an important role in retention. Please remember this. Today I've talked about abutment design. There is many more to discuss. If you're interested in specifics, please refer to offline master course. Thank you.